Welcome to Texas State University's Chemistry 2330, Introduction to Organic Chemistry. I'm your guide, Dr. David Irvin. We will continue with Chapter 6, Part 2, Chirality. So now that we know that all enantiomers have to have a mirror image and be non-superimposable, it's very important for us to learn how to draw uh, the compounds in a way that we can understand whether or not they are superimposable. So when we started drawing compounds, we started drawing them with skeletal structures, but sometimes that wasn't a good representation. So we have to add things that tell us that there's a tetrahedral geometry around that bond. So that's where the wedges come in. So a solid wedge is sticking out of the page at us, a dashed wedge is going into the page, and a straight line is in the plane of the page, okay? So that way, if we look at this right here, we want to look at four different representations for the enantiomers of 2-butanol. It's our smallest compound that we can do this to, so let's go ahead and try it, one of our smaller molecules. Okay, so if we look at one and two of this, we're using a wedge shape to show that it has tetrahedral geometry. Notice they have two different orientations, okay? They actually represent the exact same isomer. They are just drawn in different configurations, okay? So if we look at this right here, so we have a wedged uh, group here. If we rotate, this out of the plane and this into the plane by 60 degrees, we now have all three carbons here in the plane of the paper. So all we've done is rotate uh, around this axis here to give us these exactly the same structure. All, all we've changed is where our wedges are, okay? So, when we draw these compounds, we a lot of times use what we call the skeletal structure, where we don't draw out the CH2, CH3. We only draw them as the line drawing. And so when we do that, let's look at another way to represent it as a line drawing here. Here, we draw it as a representation of a line drawing, but to draw attention to the fact that we have a chiral compound, we actually add the hydrogen with the dashed wedge. However, most of the time we don't add those hydrogens and you can actually end up with a compound that looks like this. This is exactly the same isomer, except we did not draw attention to the fact that the hydrogen is the fourth group, okay? We have a methyl group as one group, an ethyl group as the second group, an OH as the third group, and the hydrogen is our fourth group, okay? So we have to pay attention to where the hydrogen is. We cannot lose track of that hydrogen as our fourth group. <clears throat> okay, so now that we have convinced ourselves that all of four of those drawings are exactly the same compound, let's take the one compound we started with, this enantiomer here, and let's figure out how to draw its uh, other compound, the mirror image of it. So if we think about drawing the mirror image of it here, if we have this compound here and we put a mirror here, we would be able to say, okay, starting from here, we have the CH3s and then a CH2, and then we have our wedge coming out here and we have our methyl group coming out here. Okay, so if we look at this, this seems to be the mirror image of this. However, we could have taken this representation and all we did was rotate it 180 degrees, and instead of the OH coming out at us, it's going back the methyl group is now swapped from this side to that side, right here. So this is exactly the same as this image here. It's just been rotated 180 degrees. Okay, so it's very important we get our rotations and our representations clear in our heads so that we can clearly identify our chiral compounds and their isomers. Okay. <clears throat> Because enantiomers are different compounds, they have different names. We have a way to distinguish this. We call it the RS system. And so if we look at this particular compound, okay, we have a lot of different things happening here. We have different functional groups, but we only have one chiral carbon in each of these compounds here. And it's <clears throat> this one here and this one here. 
okay? So this particular one happens to be a, a biologically active material called ibuprofen. It's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agent. And our body can only process one of these enantiomers. A lot of biological systems only process one or the other enantiomer, not both. And so, or it goes through a different metabolic pathway. So it's very important that we identify which one we have, and it's very important we only prescribe the one that is active to us, okay? So while there's a lot of different carbons here, there's only one chiral carbon, and so that's the one we have to identify as being R or S. Let's prove to ourselves it's a chiral carbon. We have a hydrogen, we have a methyl group, we have a carboxylic acid, we have a benzene ring. That's four different groups. That means we have a chiral center. That means when we draw its mirror image, it will not be superimposable. Okay, so let's look at how we drew our mirror image here. We're gonna draw our mirror here. So we started with our carboxylic acid. We drew that over here. Our methyl group on a wedge is still here. Our hydrogen on the backing, on the dashed wedge here. And then this group is in the plane and this group is in the plane. So I think this is an accurate representation of the mirror image that is now non-superimposable. So now we have a pair of enantiomers. We just have to figure out which is which, okay? So in our R and S system, we're gonna help, it's gonna help us identify which is R and which is S. We don't know just yet. So let's figure out some rules to help us identify this. Okay, when we are assigning R or S to a, a system, we have to assign priority. And it's the same priority system we used when we decided the cis and trans and the E and Z on the double bonds. The highest is going to be the highest priority, which has the highest Z number or total Z number. And four is going to be the lowest. Typically, four is usually hydrogen because it's typically the last of the four different things bonded to that carbon center. Okay, so think about your highest Z number is number one, and then your lowest Z number, typically um, hydrogen or something very low like that, is going to be your lowest. You want to orient, redraw the stereo center such that the lowest priority thing is projecting away from you. Okay, now the reason we're doing this is so that you can decide if the thing that's lowest priority is going away from you, then you have your highest priority. And then by looking at whether it's this next priority is going to the uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, you can tell the difference here. Because number four doesn't is the lowest priority, you want to look at numbers one, two, and three to decide whether they're going one way or the other. So what I like to do is I actually like to use my hand. So if you look down your hand and your wrist is always number four, then you can go with whatever orientation you have written down and say, okay, priority one is one of the fingers. Then look at, make sure that you're assigning priority two to the same uh, object and we'll, we'll do this again. And then if it goes one, two, such that it goes in a clockwise, one, two, three, ends up going in a clockwise fashion, we call that the R isomer. Okay, for rectus, for right or correct. Okay, if you decide that this is your one, this is your two, and this is your three, you're now going counterclockwise. And counterclockwise is defined S for sinister or left. So it'd be left handed. Okay, so let's look at that again. Okay, and let's assign R and S using our hand and our priorities here. Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is figure out, number one, which carbon is our chiral carbon, okay? So this has three hydrogens, two hydrogens, three hydrogens, so it can't be any of those. So it must be this one right here. This is the carbon we're dealing with. So let's look at our priorities, okay? Chlorine is heavier than carbon, which is heavier than carbon. So our chlorine becomes number one, okay? Now this carbon here, just like we had in chapter four, has another carbon bonded to it, so that's a higher priority than the one with only hydrogens on it. So this is our priority two, which makes this our priority three, and like usual, our lowest priority is number four. It's typically hydrogen, so it's easy to find. 
Okay, so that being said, <clears throat> we now have to arrange our hand in a way that we can have our priority so we can decide whether it's R or S. Okay, and so in our projection here on the screen, the hydrogen is facing back. So if you put your hand facing your, uh, your face and you think of this as your hydrogen here, we can see that chlorine would be the finger up here, the ethyl group would be the finger over here, and the methyl group would be the finger here. So that's one, two, three. And if you look at it, it's one, two, three. That's going counterclockwise if you're looking at it. Counterclockwise means it would be the S configuration because it's going counterclockwise, okay? <clears throat> so we're gonna try that again, and we're gonna use this other structure to help us look at that. We're gonna use the exact same steps. We're gonna use our hand. We're gonna try to assign priorities as one, two, three, and we always have our lowest priority where our wrist is. <clears throat> okay, so let's do this again with the next compound <clears throat> right here. Um, we have a hydrogen here. <clears throat> so that's gonna be our lowest priority. We have an oxygen, and oxygen has a higher Z number or atomic number than carbon. So we have two carbons and an oxygen. So oxygen is number one in priority, highest Z number. And just like before, we have a carbon with two carbons bonded to it and a carbon with one carbon bonded to it. So that takes the higher priority. So it's our highest priority, number two. And then this is our number three and our hydrogen is number four. All right, so now let's take our fingers out and look at ourselves and again, orienting ourselves. So the hydrogen is in our position where our wrist is and our oxygen looks like we where our thumb is. The carbon number two, the one with the second priority with the double bond looks like it'd be here. And then three would be this one up here. So we have oxygen, double bonded carbon, single bonded carbon, and that's going in a clockwise fashion, clockwise fashion, which would make this the R configuration. So from using our hand and using priority, this is our S, sinister, counterclockwise. This is our R, rectus, clockwise configuration. Okay, practice that a few times and let's continue. Okay, so let's go back to that ibuprofen problem and figure out which is R and which is S. And we're gonna start with the one on this side using the exact same configuration I had. It doesn't matter whether you use your left or right hand, just pick one and use it all the time and you can do it. So let's assign our R and S to the figure here on the left. And we're gonna end and I have our hydrogen to the back here. So by perspective, I'm gonna move my hand so the hydrogen is facing back. We have the methyl group here at this position. We have the carboxylic acid at this position. And we have that double bonded carbon at this position. Okay, that carboxylic acid has two oxygens bonded to it. The number two position has two, has total three carbons bonded to it. The oxygen have a higher Z number, so they take priority, then the carbon, and then the carbon with the three hydrogens on it. And of course, our hydrogen is number four back here. So we have one, two, three, is one, two, three. It's going clockwise, if you look at it, clockwise in that position. Therefore, that makes this the R configuration, the clockwise configuration. Okay, let's use that exact same pattern and see if we can prove to ourselves the other isomer, the one here on the right here is the S isomer. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna put our hydrogen back here and we're gonna look at our priorities. This methyl group is the one at the top here. Okay, the carboxylic acid is sticking here, looking at it and the benzene ring, uh, carbon that's only bonded to carbons is over here. So that makes this carboxylic acid our number one. And looking at our perspective, this is our carbon double bonded to carbons, and then this is our methyl group. So one, two, three, we're going counterclockwise. One, two, three, counterclockwise right here, giving us the S or sinister left-handed counterclockwise derivative, and therefore, this is S. Yes, this is hard, but practice using either hand. If that doesn't work, uh, 
uh, email me and I'll show you a different method that might work for you. Okay, so now that we have the stereo centers here, if we just have the one stereo center, we can have an, 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 a pair of enantiomers, okay? However, if we have more than one stereo center, we now have many more complex possible isomers, okay? So if you can have two isomers for one stereo center, if you put two stereo centers, that means you have a total of four isomers. And we call that set of four isomers diastereomers. The ones that are mirror images non-superimposable are enantiomers, but the pair of pairs is a diastereomer, okay? Now, if you have more than two, that means you're gonna have two to the number of stereo centers you have. So if you had three stereo centers, it's three, it's two cubed, which is eight. If you had four, it gets even more complex because that's going to be eight times two, which is 16. So it gets really high number of isomers as soon as you add four than that. But enantiomers are two isomers, non-superimposable. Diastereomers are two sets of two. If you have two stereo centers, and then it keeps increasing if you have more. Okay, so how can we identify the different uh, types we have here? 